Hi, and welcome to How Do I Use a Life Pack 15 for BLS Providers. So, we want to go ahead and turn it on. Now you're noticing down below it's telling me to replace battery 2. If you want to check the status of your batteries all you do is look in the right top corner and you notice that battery 1 is 3 fourths full and battery 2 definitely needs to be changed. So before we take any vitals let's say we want to add some patient information. We're going to go ahead and go to Options. Patient is already highlighted, so I'm going to click. And we have all these different things that we can add the patient data to. So let's go ahead and do last name. I'm only going to put in my first letter, but you can put in the full name and hit End. You can fill in all these other things the same way. Let's go ahead and put in the age, and how about the gender also. So I'm happy with my information. All I'm going to do is hit home screen, and I'm back to the home screen. How about that? So let's start taking some vitals. I would like to start with the pulse and pulse oximetry. As you can see, my SpO2 line is already connected. And I'm going to take our little machine and enclose it around my finger and in a couple of seconds we will get some readings. Now remember, with pulse oximetry it doesn't work well with nail polish, long nails, cold hands, cold fingers, and you can get abnormally high readings with a patient who has carbon monoxide poisoning. It will be falsely high. So as you can see, my heart rate is a little high. It's at 88 and my SpO2 which is at 98%. So those those aren't bad readings. Let's say that I am an unstable patient and I would really like to know or to hear my pulse rate. So all I have to do is come over highlight the box, click, click on SpO2 volume, and I can choose the volume at which I want to hear my pulse rate. So let's say I just want it to quiet. I'll click and hit home screen. So now you can listen to this wonderfully obnoxious thing during your ride let's say that you don't want to listen to it anymore. Your patient is pretty stable and you're kind of annoying them. So all you have to do is come back to your dial, highlight the SpO2, and click. Click on SpO2 volume and turn it off. Now I mentioned that carbon monoxide can give you abnormally high readings with pulse oximetry. I mean technically you know this could be completely wrong. So I want to check my carbon monoxide levels and this is the great thing about the Life Pack 15. So I'm going to come back to the dial, highlight the SpO2, I'm already on the parameter, click on it, and I got my SPCO. I click on and for a couple of seconds it'll tell me what my carbon monoxide reading is which is 0% and that's fantastic so not worried about carbon monoxide poisoning. So let's say you have a patient with asthma, COPD, or even difficulty breathing and you want to monitor capnography. So you can take one of these fantastic little nasal cannulas 
that have an extra piece on them. They look like the regular oxygen nasal cannulas, but they're not. They're different. They still hook up the same way. You've got the prongs in the nose, and they wrap around the ears. And they look just like this. They're kind of silly, but they work fantastically. So, what we're going to do is take the end piece and plug it up into our CO2 connector up here. It's just a little door that you open up and you twist in the end. Now since I'm talking th the numbers will be a little screwy so bear with me a second. I want to see waveform capnography so I'm gonna highlight the bottom line and click waveform capnography CO2. So now that I have that set I can go back to the home screen and we can see the waveform and once again it's going to look a little off because I'm I'm talking. Let me see if I can control my breathing while I take the first BP. How you take the blood pressure is you go up to NIBP and it'll start to inflate the cuff. Okay, so you've seen that we got a couple normal looking waveforms here. Now once I'm talking again, it's going to look a little screwy, so don't pay attention to it. As you can see, I got the BP, and it reads 126 over 89, and for our monitor, we have it set to take every 10 minutes, and there's a little tiny countdown here. Now I have taken off the capnography off my face. It's no longer there. So you're seeing a flat line here. If you were monitoring a patient and all of a sudden they stop breathing, the monitor is going to let you know in about 30 seconds. So as you see, we have an alarm apnea. It's counting for you how long past 30 seconds. So if you want to shut that off, you go up to the alarms and you can shut it off that way. Or we can go ahead and unplug it. And one thing that was really cool that I kind of just tried to skip over there, if you go to alarms, you can set a whole different set of alarms on here. You know, if the pulse rate is off, SBO2, then so you can see what the parameters are set at. So, right now I'm going to go ahead and undo my pulse oximetry, and I'm going to undo my BP. 